everyone, my name is Sophia and today I'm here to talk about my favorite sequels ever. So, I know that like some struggles that a lot of people have with starting series is that they don't like if they they don't know if the quality of the first book is gonna continue throughout or they really like the first book, they know that book two is gonna be something different, they're not sure they're gonna like book two. So I made a list of uh, second books in series, Th these are just second books, that I think are better than the first book and elevate the series to another level. So yeah, let's get right into it. The first book I'm gonna talk about is Layer of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is the first book in the Diviner's Quartet. Um, the last book isn't out yet, it's gonna be out in February 2020. The first book is pretty much about ghosts and superpowers in like 2020, 2020, 1920s New York. And it's so fun, it has um, a big cast of characters, like main characters, that it's multiple point of view. It's so fun, but at the same time, kind of spooky. And oh my God, it's just so, such a good book. And the sequel, it explores more than just our limited scope and points of view in book one. Like we get to know more about the other characters. We expand a little bit more on this like overarching evil that's like the main vil villain of the story. And yeah, I just think this book is really, really good. Oh my god, I love it. I, this is, I think, way spookier than book one because it has to do with dreams and stuff. The, the title of the book is Layer of Dreams and the, the tagline is Not All Dreams Should Come True. And yeah, this book is so good. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. This is the sequel to The Bear and the Nightingale, also by Catherine Arden, obviously. And The Bear and the Nightingale, it's a lot more atmosphere driven and very slow. It has like little to no plot. It's about this character and her village and Russia and that atmosphere and yeah. This book, it really picks up on the plot. You get to know a lot more on the overall conflicts and just how Russia at this time is in this world. And it's so fun. I put a lot of tabs. And this book is lyrical. It's feminist. It has a really interesting slow burn romance. It has really interesting plot. And I just love it. The next book I'm going to talk about is Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. This is the sequel to Red Sister and the Book of the Ancestor trilogy. And wow, this is like one of my favorite trilogies ever, my favorite series ever, my favorite books ever. And it's just so good because like the first book is about this girl Nona, Nona Grey, who's like kind of saved. Nona Grey, who is going to be hanged for the murder of this noble man. She's like nine or 10, just <laughs> FYI. She's gonna be hanged on the murder of this giant noble. And when she's about to be hanged, this abbess of the convent comes there and saves her. And she goes train at the convent. She, she, she makes friends. She finds her family, found family. She finds her family and also the family of this guy, she killed her, trying to kill her too. But it's just so good. And the first book, Red Sister, it's is much more contained, which is the case with most first books. But the story is just about known in the convent. And we get out a little bit in the end, but it's overall just the known in the convent. But the second book, you really get to know more politically about what's going on in that the strip of land they live in. Get to know more politically, you get to know more about the world overall, you get to get out of the convent more. And this book also has the perspective of Abbess Glass, which is the abbess of the convent. And oh my god, she's like one of the best characters I've ever read about. She's amazing, and this book is overall amazing. I tabbed it also, a lot, a lot of tabs. But like, Red Sister is already so good, and then you pick up Grey Sister, and it's another level. And then you pick up Holy Sister, and it's like, wow. This series is just, this series just amazing. The next book I'm gonna talk about is pretty much my brand. <laughs> and that is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. Nevernight is my favorite series of all time. If you don't know, the first book is about this girl, Mia Corver, who her entire family was killed by the people ruling the Republic. 
and the, she vows to get revenge on them so she goes to an assassin school and shenanigans ensue never night is way more complex than that and god's grave goes to another level of complexity and scope the overall quality of the book you know and oh my gosh this book is just perfection the plot twists like the last chunk of the book are some of the best things i've ever seen in my life the first time i read that and the second and the third i couldn't put it down i was gasping the twists and turns i tabbed it also <laughs> i tend to tap the books i read i read for, i first read this as an arc before it came out in i would say september 2017 and i reread it again this september and oh my god this book is just so amazing and yeah highly highly recommended this series is just perfection and just to keep jay christoph books together next i'm gonna talk about gemina book two the illuminate files by jay christoph and amy kaufman so wow <laughs> i mean like illuminate pretty much everybody knows if you've been on booktube it's like a ya booktube darling but i don't read as much sci-fi as i do fantasy but oh my god this series is amazing illuminate is pretty much about um katie and ezra these two people who just broke up they were dating they just broke up in this planet who gets attacked by an a corporation trying to like get the mining they do there so they have like the humans there get three ships and they're running away and they're being like they're being pursued by a battle carrier and they're gonna die so it's about that whole thing it has a sentient ai has horror elements it's epistolary for example oh my god this is gonna be so bad to show but it is epistolary and gemina fo focuses on different characters so in illuminate the um katie and ezra are trying to get to heimdall's station which is a like a wormhole jump point and this book follows characters in Heimdall Station, the wormhole jump point. And I love I love Illuminate, but I I adore this book. Like I know that doesn't sound as much, but like I I revere this book. This book is just so amazing. It's one of the best books I've ever read. It's just fucking incredible. The characters I relate I like I'm attached a lot more to the characters in Gemina than I was at the characters in Illuminate. I think the plot is another level. The horror elements are also very good. I don't know if they're better than Illuminate, but they're also very good. And overall, Gemina is just, oh my god, it just has so much personality and heart to it. Oh, Illuminate also has, but like Gemina just like attached itself to me in a different way, in such a good way. And yeah, I love this series. I was very disappointed by the ending, but who cares about her? This book is phenomenal. And everybody should read it even if you only read illuminate and you loved it and you think oh gemina is about different characters why would i want to read that it's better <laughs> that's the thing it's better so i'm gonna end this video by talking about words of radiance the second book in the stormlight archive so by brenda sanderson the stormlight archive is let's say a 10 book series broken up into two five book arcs so this is like book two out of five in this arc so it's not really a middle book but it is a sequel and okay words of ratings let me put it back here because this is heavy this which is heavy and wow way of kings is very difficult to get into you like if you are not used to high fantasy like you'll put down way of kings for sure it's very slow it has four false beginnings before the actual beginning following the following the actual main character and it's like it's a lot of it's very political but it's also very magical but it's also very much a build-up and of course the ending has the trademark sanderson avalanche but words of radiance is just we are already established into this world we are already established with most of the characters some of the main characters and so Words of Ratings gets that establishment we already have and just goes crazy with it. It just, wow, it's another level, it's another scope. It, like, you you know the world, you know the world building, you know the characters. So it just, it can do whatever it wants. It's so insane. 
It's so amazing. It is one of my favorite books of all time. This series is like my second favorite series ever, just before Nevernight. And I don't know how to sell it. I don't know how even to sell the first book because it's so huge. And it's so, for example, if you're not aware, this book is over a hundred, a thousand pages. So is the first one. So is the third one. The fourth one isn't out yet, but it will be over a thousand pages as well. So like, if you're into high fantasy, you probably heard or at least read Sanderson, but man, this book is just so amazing. It's so another level. We get so much more information on the world we already know and the characters we already know. And this follows like one of the best characters I've ever read about, which is Shalon. She may not seem like much in book one, but damn, she's like, the bitch is fucked up. <laughs> so yeah. And yes, these were the books I wanted to talk about, the sequels I love. And let me know if you love some of these. Let me know which other ones you love. And yeah, my name is Sophia, and I'll see you next time. Bye!